had one day with him, I guess, at practice. Chris, how do you, you feel they responded? Great. Great. I thought our guys were uh, uh, really good yesterday and uh, looking forward to tomorrow. How about you? How about you, man? Resilient. I'm good. Kristen said you guys talked about the game, didn't necessarily watch some film. What did that talk focus on specifically? Um, you know, maybe why um, why the result happened. You know, it was replayed a thousand times, so it was like, uh, you know, for us to go play by play uh, and inflict more hurt uh, to our guys, that, that was the decision I made as a coach. Um, that um, isn't unusual. You know, sometimes you, you watch tape from the game before, like we did after we lost to Florida State, and then sometimes you make the decision uh, not to. Uh, could be a big win, could be a loss, uh, but uh, I just felt like there were, there were some other important things to talk about, not necessarily, um, you know, show them on tape. Did you watch it yourself? I watched it multiple times, yeah. Oh, did you? And watching it, what was going through your mind? What were your impressions? Um, well, I, the first thing I'd tell you is, like, uh, my job is to take full ownership of, of how our team played in the last 10 minutes, last really six and a half six. minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, as hard as that was to swallow, you know, our team lost confidence in the moment. And my teams generally haven't been that way. Uh, but, you know, it's my job to figure out, you know, why. And I think confidence comes, um, your confidence comes from preparation. Having been in those situations before, um, you know, whether it's zone press, whether it's the zone, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, you know, being in those moments uh, before and, and recognizing, you know, how to get yourself out of it. And, and, and so um, we didn't prepare um, with some of the things that Duke brought to the fight in the last six minutes because they had never shown it on tape. And, you know, I beat myself up for that. You know, what they had shown on tape, you know, the entire year, uh, we dismantled for 34 minutes. Um, and so it was tough to swallow uh, because everything that they had showed on tape, they didn't have one answer for when we played them. Now, what they didn't show on tape, I didn't have an answer for our guys. And it was, it was <clears throat> part spacing, but it was a big part of having confidence in that moment. And that's where I told our team, you know, I failed them as the coach. Um, but I'll be better the next time. And they'll be better the next time. And, you know, in life, I think sometimes, um, you know, people only want to talk about, like, who wins championships and all that stuff. But I think a lot of times those people are made through setbacks. And that's what I tried to explain after the game. Um, just because of what what I went through as, as a college player, three ACLs and um, just de dealt a lot of personal setbacks in athletics. And if you're going to be at this level, you're, you're going to have some really, really tough moments. And I think those moments can really define you individually and really define our team. And I use the illustration of my last three teams at Xavier to them. I told them in 15-16, our two seed team beat Villanova by 15 when they were number one in the country and eventually won the national championship. We just skipped along, skipped along until we didn't when we lost to Wisconsin. And we, we were a wreck, one of the hardest locker rooms I've ever been in. Last year we were one seed and everybody, you know, followed our story or knows our story, how we lost to Florida State. But what they don't know is that we were down 17 to East Tennessee State with six minutes left in the game, and we made the same type of comeback that, that you know, Duke made the other, the other day. We were also down four points to Georgetown with 20 seconds left and hit a four-point play. We had never been through anything. Everything was good times until it wasn't against Florida State. And the team that was sandwiched in between was a team that lost six games in a row, some heartbreaking locker rooms, 
some tough moments. And when we were in the Sweet 16 against Arizona, and we were down nine going into the last four-minute war, there was zero panic because our guys had been in those moments. We had been hardened by them. And there were some tough moments that we, that we had gone through. And our team was better because of it. It's really hard to see that in the moment in time right now. But I, I'm going to say it again. I really believe that champions and, and people are made through the tough setbacks they experience in their life. And, um, yeah. CC said the guys are angry. Could you sense that they do have this bad taste in their mouth? Hell, I don't know how you could. I mean, I already know that feeling is going to be there. We, we all felt that. But the response is the most important thing. And I just wanted to very clearly make sure that there's no, there's no, like, well, you should have done this. Like, we're, we're all together. I made mistakes. They certainly made mistakes. There were also some things that, you know, through a comedy of errors, we missed three front ends of one-on-ones. When we did execute, we got three wide open shots by our two best three-point shooters that maybe changed the game. So it was, it was everything. And for, for us, it's about understanding it, swallowing it, taking ownership of it, and being better because of it. Chris, you kind of mentioned that you liked the response from your guys yesterday in practice, but to truly know how they'll handle it, do they need to do it in a game situation with the lights on them? Well, we've done that all year. I mean, you have to understand, like, go back to Tallahassee. That was a tough locker room, tough, tough. You know, no, nobody had, nobody had the 23-point the uh, comeback by Duke in their minds at that moment. Like, all we knew was we blew a 10-point lead, and, you know, our point guard fell down, lost the ball, the whole, the whole deal. And I know what our response was on Tuesday. So we're in a brutal league. We have to be able to look forward. I think our players understand that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's got to manifest itself in games, but uh, I'm really confident in my group. You guys have handled pressure really, if you go beyond these last two games, a lot of times during the course of the season. Do you anticipate, though, that teams will try to figure out the I don't rhythm? think teams will go out of their way yeah. to change their identity uh, because, you know, we had some bad moments in a few games. Um, if they do, they probably won't be very good at it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I told our team, I mean, the other day, we were at Carolina, and Carolina started to play like chickens with their heads cut off defensively. In the last six minutes, they were doubling and trapping every, everything. And, you know, by and large, you know, we got the ball where we needed to. Jordan War hits a wide open three in the corner. CC goes right down the lane, lays it in. We just needed a little bit more poise in those moments, like we've shown in other games. Um, to, to come, up, come away with a win. And we didn't do that. And so, um, you know, hats off to Duke. Um, maybe we'll play him again. From what you've Did seen you? from Clemson's defense, does it seem, what is their identity? Does it seem like they're likely to change that to, like you said, to kind of try to frustrate you? You'd have to ask Brad that. I mean, they're not a very deep team, um, but either is Duke. So, I, you know, who knows? I just, like I said before, our confidence comes through preparation, and I'm going to prepare, you know, in, in, in ways that uh, I should have done better the last time. Did you feel like for the first 30 minutes that was as well as you guys played all year? And what in particular did you like about your team? Um, it's funny because, you know, I think if you hear other people, it's the worst 30 minutes Duke's ever played. So I, I don't know what's <laughs> – I really don't know what's reality. It's like um, – like I said, you know, what they showed on tape, I thought we dismantled it. And um, I didn't think we did it with smoke and mirrors. I mean, they didn't shoot the ball well. We kept them in front. We kept them off the glass. And we ran every set play that we wanted. But, you know, we got to do that for 40 minutes. That was as well as we've played, I think, um, all year, yeah. But that was, off that. was there a point where you had to turn the TV off or get off Twitter, you know, because of everything from that game? Um, I, I'm weird. That, that stuff does not bother me. I mean, it might bother me, like, right when they say it, but, like, literally, so many people say so much stuff now. It's just noise, you know, like, not really. You blamed yourself, Chris. But how, and you mentioned that Duke could never use 2-2-1 or 
maybe even the two three. I don't know. How could you anticipate that? I mean, well, I mean, you know, you go as a coach, you sort of plan, you know, your practice segments of what you want to do, and so. You know, you have to prioritize things. And, right. you know, some coaches will practice for three and a half hours. You know, Kenny will tell you we're on the floor 90 minutes, uh, never more than two hours. And, you know, I just felt like it was so much more important to work on not giving up second shots, um, you know, being able to um, handle being denied man to man, uh, being able to catch it in our spots and our set plays, being able to execute uh, against their man. And so, you know, very far down the totem pole was zone offense. And, um, you know, like I, I said before, I think we played like on a Monday after Virginia Tech took off Tuesday, and then we didn't play till Saturday. And I had said to one of you guys about how we used that Wednesday. It was sort of like an oil change. We just worked on us. So even though I knew that whoever we played after Virginia Tech, um, Florida State wasn't going to do such and such, we, we were still going to work on every facet of who we need to be at Louisville. We didn't have that luxury with, with you know, the turnaround, but that's, it's still not an excuse. Anything else, guys? Thank you. No. Nope. <clears throat>